Right. Welcome to this third video. Today we will talk about exploitative poker on the felt, but also outside of the felt, how to think about it. That will be more specifically a part of the bonus course. You know, there is this course coming on the 19th of February, and you know how it works with, with Upswing. If you uh, take it the first week, the bonus course will be for free. So the bonus course, it will, it will be about many, many things, about poker culture, about how to be a champion on the felt and outside of the felt, how to take poker seriously, I would say, but also how to think about uh, your opponent's imbalances. And that is uh, what we will talk about today. So here, you know, uh, there are a lot of fantasies about, about exploitative poker that is very complicated, but actually it is just like a puzzle. It is just like a game. So we will do this exercise today and try to do it. It will be, it will be valuable. And then if, if you like, you will have more in the course. So the idea it is, for instance, let's say your opponent is oversee betting on the turn. What does that mean? You have to be able to, like the, the, the Germans uh, often say, to connect the dots or uh, to be what I like to imagine let as a travel on the game tree, if you'd like. So that means that if he has any balance in the turn, yes, of course, you will concentrate your exploits on the turn. But that also means stuff for the river and that also means stuff for the flop and also for pre-flop. So that means that you should always try to have that in mind. Obviously, it is difficult, but... Uh, the idea is to train it and then to be able to do that in the heat of the battle in, in a better way. I collected 62 exploits uh, in total for this course. So that means that for every single node in the game tree, which is important, obviously some obscure line that nobody knows it is not important, but for everything which is the main lines, if you'd like, there is an imbalance in your opponent and then how to be able to, to exploit. The idea, it is to uh, do like maybe three, four, five of these a day, just to train yourself to be, to be able to do the, the, the mental gymnastics, if you'd like, in your head, to train that so that when you are on the felt, you can do that way better. For instance, you see a showdown if you're playing live and you think, okay, oh, but that is not normal here. There is an imbalance on the river. So what does that mean for my whole strategy against this guy in the next hours? Or if it is online, obviously, that is great. You can tag, you can tag, you can put color code him or, or whatever, and you will know, okay, this guy is imbalanced in this node of the tree. Now, let's take three examples. So the idea for you, it is you will have the slide with the node and the imbalance. And then before to hear the solution, please try to gather all of your thoughts, all of the exploits. You might think, okay, he's doing too much of this. What does that mean? for the whole game tree and try to find something for all of the streets. And then, so that means you can pause the, the, the video to think about that and then watch the, the, the solution. Situation number one, your opponent open races too often preflop. In other words, they likely have too wide of a range given their position and size. How could you adjust your strategy to exploit this player's tendency? Okay, so if somebody open raises too much, the exploits are quite easy. You will three bet more, you will call more. Normally, if he plays perfectly, he will have to fold a lot. So it would make sense to three bet polarized. If you have another information that he's calling too much, then obviously you would have to three bet merge. If he plays normally, then if you imagine the pyramid, he has already too many hands when he's open raising, so he should raise them right away. Otherwise, if it's not the case, if he's calling too much, you can uh, three bet merge. If you are in position to the player and they are good players behind, you know that they will squeeze more so you could trap a little bit more and then do your back raise or just uh, raise against the squeezer. That would be um, a sweet one. And obviously also he opens too much. Probably he will see bet too much on the flop as well. You can just raise on the flop and attack him a lot. Situation number two. Your opponent see bets on the flop too often when they are in position. How could you adjust your strategy to exploit this player's tendency? If someone is over -c betting in position, and this one is massive because everybody on earth is over -c betting in position, how should you react? First of all, you have to check raise more. For instance, for a smaller sizing, it is the same spirit than what we saw pre-flop. If somebody is a three betting too polar, for instance, or three betting too much, you can min click and then what, what, what does he do? Well, here it is the same. Uh, they have too much garbage, too much air, and they will not know what to do. Other 
option, which is great. It is to go to float wider, to call more on the flop, and then go for the check or check bet, so the river probe, uh, because they will have to check back on the turn a lot because they don't have anything. And they know that they called the seabed, so that their strategy didn't work. Uh, so now they check back the turn, and you can you can uh, make them fold on, on the river a lot. Uh, don't lead. That would be absolutely unnecessary. You don't need to put more money in the pot with your strong hands. They will do that for you. Don't three bet too much free flop. This one is, is nice. If you can arrive already on the flop with a stronger range, it is great. You will be able to print massively against the over uh, C bet. And if you feel it, you can defend more preflop. It is more difficult because you will be out of position and you will have to do some ninja stuff. But why not? It is absolutely possible. If they are over C betting, then you can go for the, the check raise. Sometimes you can, you can uh, check call and lead on the turn or go for the, the river probe and you will have a lot of opportunities to attack the wide range. Situation number three. Your opponent check raises the flop and then checks the turn with strong hands too infrequently. In other words, after check raising the flop, they don't trap with their strong hands on the turn often enough. How could you adjust your strategy to exploit this player's tendency? If someone is not check raise checking enough strong hands, and that happens also a lot amongst every single even top rank uh, on the world, how should you react? Well, first of all, you should obviously stab like crazy. This one is, is very easy, but you should fold more when he's barreling and be more careful on the river. That means all of the good stuff is there. It is uh, dangerous, but you can float more on the flop because you will have great visibility afterwards. And that's actually the reason that you can even open raise more because you will know what will happen later. And it is, you know, the golden goal of poker. It's a game of incomplete information. If we know how he will play, okay, when he has something, he will bet. When he doesn't have, we can stab and, and, and win the pot. That is very easy, and that's why we should uh, play more against this player. Okay, so I hope you, you did these three exercises. If you like that, there are 62 total in the, the bonus course, and you can subscribe here. You will just give your mail, and like this, on the 19th, you will have a reminder, and when the course is launched, like this, in the first week, if you are interested, you can just buy the course, and like this, you have the bonus course for free.